Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have quite an interesting beer. This guy is half German and half Scottish, so quite a good combination actually. But it's brewed up in Ellen in Aberdeenshire by Brewdog, but it's their collaboration from last year with Weinstef and of course the oldest brewery in the world. And this one is the India Pale Weizen. So it was brewed for this collaboration fest and the idea behind brewing this beer was that they wanted to basically fuse both breweries kind of trademark style so in Brewdog's case it's an American style IPA and in Vine Stefan's case it's the trademark Hefeweizen beer so it should be a really really nice beer for us to review today and two breweries that I very very much enjoy actually. So anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a history of both the breweries involved here it will only be two or three minutes I've shortened it down a little bit if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. The brewery websites are in the video description for you below. The Vine Stefan one is incidentally available in English, and there's also links down there to my other reviews that I've done from Vine Stefan and from Brewdog. Please add me as a friend on Untapped and do like the Facebook page for the channel as well. Your support would be much appreciated. But anyway, to tell you about Brewdog first, of course, Brewdog are from the little town of Ellen, which is just a bit to the north of the city of Aberdeen in northeastern Scotland. But this company is the love child of James Wall and Martin Dickey and it was founded back in 2007 at a small brewery in the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraser Brat in the very northeast of Scotland. This uh, brewery if you like was right on the tip of the monster's nose as I always like to describe it. Scotland looks a bit like a monster's head um, but they actually very I think it was 2012 they moved their operations down to Ellen but these guys are known for being a very experimental brewery and also as well for their, uh, their strong beers as well. They held the title of world's strongest beer on three separate occasions but they draw they say that they draw a lot of their inspiration from their beers from California and Stone Brewing Company in particular but these guys obviously then are largely inspired by the American craft brewing renaissance but they've got several brew pubs these days these started back in 2009 with their home bar in Aberdeen which was one of my local haunts up there and throughout the following years they went all the way through the rest of the UK pretty much every major city in the UK has one now and they've also got various international sites in Italy I think in Barcelona now as well up in Sweden Oslo in Norway Helsinki in Finland uh, Roppongi in Tokyo and Japan and also down in Brazil as well so a brewery that is very much expanding and they've just announced as well that there's going to be a second Brewdog brewery in Columbus, Ohio in America. So a lot of good things to come from Brewdog. But what's very interesting about this company is that they have their equity for punk scheme. So a lot of their infrastructure developments like this are funded by are funded by people like you and me, fans of the brewery. So essentially you buy shares in the brewery, they use it to fund infrastructure development such as bars, and I think mainly it's the brewing operations that it goes towards funding actually but this allows them to make a lot more new beer and you get a lifetime discount in the bars and in the shops and various things like this so really quite cool and they're always expanding so always new things coming from them but they are the largest independently owned Scottish craft brewery these days and this is largely due to the fact of this Equity for Punks programme I believe James Watt and Martin Dickey still own about three quarters of the business so pretty cool in that regard that the original guys are still very prominent in it but anyway that's your kind of brief history History of Brewdog itself. To move on to Vine Stefan, the origins of the Vine Stefan brewery trace back to the year 725 when St. Corbinian founded his monastery on the Narberg Hill in Rising near Munich. It's just to the north of the city of Munich actually. But the brewing officially began in Vine Stefan in the year 1040 when Abbot Arnold obtained the brewing license from the city of Freising, although before that they were actually brewing beer but it just wasn't licensed if you like so. Naughty monks were doing that. But over the, few, the next few centuries the brewery and the monastery suffered various plagues, famines, earthquakes, and they also had fires as well. And due, but despite all this kind of um, this adversity, if you like, they still the monks still managed to rebuild the brewery countless times and improve their brewing methods as well. But the monastery sadly was dissolved in the year 1803 during the course of secularization. This, of course, was seen in France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and also Germany, quite a few countries in Europe, in fact. But um, the beer was still brewed despite the secularization under super, under state supervision supervision sorry at Schleisheim but later the agricultural school of Schleisheim was moved to Weinstefan and this was later elevated to the status of university which was an agricultural university at the time and this was later incorporated into the technical university of Munich in 1930 one of the mo world's most prestigious institutions actually and you can still go and learn to brew beer at Weinstefan a lot of very prominent master brewers in the craft brewing industry went there but the brewery became known as the Bayerische Staatsbrauerei officially in 19 
1921 and since 1923 they've used the Bavarian state seal on their labels and I'll just show you that in a second here so that's your two your brief history of both of the breweries involved here let me just bring up the camera and I'll point out a couple of things on the label you can see at the bottom there I'm not sure how clear it is but here the Weinstefan crest you can see that's the Bayerische state crest from Germany of course and you can see the brew dog dog symbol up at the top there and it has a brew dog bottle cap this is one of the new ones incidentally too but as always it has a little blurb on the side it says India Pale Weizen they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but how about teaching a young dog old tricks? Brewdog vs. Weinstefan is a classic Hefeweizen hop like an IPA, the signature style of the oldest brewery in the world, turbocharged with the flagship flavour of a firebrand craft brewer to create a hop-forward, fruity, spicy behemoth. This beer was, was, has the unmistakable body, mouthfeel and pungent clove flavour of the classic age-old Weizen but with a huge smash of Simcoe to drag it kicking and screaming into the craft beer generation. New tricks, old tricks, who cares as long as the beer tastes good. This one actually says it was, uh, it's got Norway, Sweden and Finland listed on the side so maybe this bottle was intended for Scandinavia before I got it and it tells you a little bit about Brewdog on the site and of Weinstefan as well. It says Weinstefan is the oldest brewery in the world for over a thousand years of brewing history since 1040 the beer has been brewed on the Weinstefan Hill in Freising uh, and the last several hundred years they have been consistently producing some of the best Weizens in the world. But having said that actually, the other beers you get from Weinstefan are really good too. The, Mün the original Münchner Helles is really nice as is the Corbinian. You'll see my review of the Corbinian come up actually. I filmed it already before I filmed this one but it's a very nice beer too. But this guy is 6.2% the actual technical aspects of the beer, as I told you, it's an IPA and Hefeweizen hybrid. It was brewed for the Collaboration Fest in 2014. They also did one with Victory from America, from Pennsylvania, and also one with uh, with Stone Brewing Company from... Um from California who I mentioned a little while ago but yeah this one comes in at 6.2% it's hopped with Centennial and Simcoe hops it's also extra hopped as well a little bit with the, a traditional hopping method they use for the, the Weizen beers and it's got a malt base of extra pale malt wheat and Munchner malts as well so should be an interesting one for us to try but let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here very much looking forward to this one as you can see a nice smoky opening there a little bit of carbonation just coming out. As you're pouring it, you can detect a little bit of the Weizen base, but you can detect these kind of tropically fruits that you expect from the American hops as well. Very nice smelling beer. But as you can see, it's poured. Oh, there's a little bit of sediment floating around in there. But as you can see, it's poured a very nice kind of bright orangey amber colour. There, there is a little bit of sediment in there. I've just had it in the fridge for the last two, three days, I think, and I don't think it had sediment before that, but. No, so not such a big deal, but as you can see it's got a frothy finger of a white head on it, they are absolutely white, no question about it being cream or slightly off-white or anything like that. Not transparent at all, if I put my fingers behind it you can't see through it there, definitely a hazy, bright, yellowy, orange, amber colour this one. Quite a lot of carbonation visible in this and the Germans from what I gather really do like their Hefeweizen beers to have a good bit of carbonation in them to make them quite refreshing. I always found the Weizen beers to be quite heavy. I could never drink more than one Weizen, but usually the Germans can drink quite a few. But yeah, it looks very nice. Little bits of sediment floating around there and some big bubbles sticking to the side of the glass too. I'm sure this one is going to be an awesome beer though. So in terms of the aroma with this one, it really is quite interesting. The style that it reminds me of a little bit is like is a kind of white IPA if that makes sense. I had a, a Dutch white IPA when I was over there and the aroma of this reminds me a little bit of that. That beer was called White Whale and it was uh, Rui Dot and Ursop I think who made that one. But it was very very nice beer but the aroma of this really reminds me of that beer. But you've got a nice, the typical elements you would expect from the Weizen, a nice big bready and quite sweet yeasty aroma coming off of this one. You can pick up the wheaty spice in it too, and there's some clove and a little bit of banana kind of infused in there. But on top of that, you're getting the sort of typical big floral and citrusy notes that you expect of the, the Simcoe and the Centennial. The Centennial, from what I remember, is quite a citrusy and aromatic -y kind of hop, and the Simcoe is more of a slightly tropical fruit. A little bit of citrus in there too, but you get some nice piney resins from it too. But in this beer, you can really smell the kind of floral and citrusy notes coming out. There's a bit of a kind of peachy and maybe passion fruit note coming out of this one. You can smell a kind of apricot from it too. 
but there's grassiness in there and you can pick up just a little bit of a kind of pine resin too but I want to say that the most prominent component of the fruit is actually the apricot but there is a peachy a slightly peachy sharpness and passion fruit in there but I do want to say really that the most prominent fruit aroma I'm getting from this is the the passion fruit and of course you do get the banana sort of bubble gummy notes from the uh, the malt base on this one too but really more of an apricot note that's very interesting I don't think I've come across a beer before that has quite such a prominent apricotty note from this but there are little, little bits of passion fruit and stuff in there too which is quite interesting a bit of piney resin and a good bit of grassy and aromatic hop you do expect a bit of grassy hop and slight acidity lemony citrus acidity from a Weizen beer as well but it smells really nice as I always say just take a little bit of time to enjoy the aromas of your beer before you drink it so without further ado let's get stuck into this guy so this is the India Pale Weizen collaboration between Vian Stefan from Rising in Bavaria and Brewdog from Ellen in Aberdeenshire Scotland Slanja Prost really interesting very smooth and very light actually on first um, on first tasting. It's not anywhere near as acidic as some of the um, the German Weizens can be. It's nicely balanced, really well balanced. Yeah, it work. This beer just works really well. Uh, it remind it does remind me quite a bit of this kind of white IPA, but the Weizen characteristics are a bit more forthright in this. They're a bit more prominent, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you've got a nice kind of bready malt base in this one. Nice Hefeweizen style malt base, as you would expect. The big bready and yeasty notes they just blank at the middle of your palate there. And, it's, and on top of that you get just this little bit of spice that builds as you move into the aftertaste. It's a little bit of the wheaty and clovey spice. It's actually an interestingly quite sweet spice and then the grassy and kind of florally aromatic hop characters, you can feel them from the edges of your tongue just creeping into the middle of your palate where this um, slightly spicy dry character is building. It's, it's really quite interesting this beer. The hybrid that they've done with this works very very well. Yeah, it really does. The banana, I'm not picking up too much in the way of, of banana flavour in this. Um, it is more of a kind of big bready and yeasty base in there and then you can pick up the wheat more to the edges of the tongue. The banana, I think, I think I can detect just a little bit of it, but it's not really that prominent at all. So that aspect of the Weizen um, is kind of overpowered a little bit by other elements of the flavour, I think, but that's maybe just me. As I always say, beer is subjective, so you might pick up slightly different notes to me, but what I can say is that the hybrid, the way that they've blended these two styles together, works exceptionally well. It's really nice. But yeah, you've got a nice kind of citrusy and mainly grassy and floral hop characteristic that goes around the edge of your palate there. As I said, you've got that slight kind of white, uh, wheaty, maybe clovey spicy character. Just that you feel the dryness of that building just inside the edge of your tongue. But around the very edges of the tongue, you're getting the grassy and kind of florally aromatic hop there. And you feel that just creeping back and building a good bridge between that nice Weizen malt base and the sort of hoppier characteristics of the IPA there. But it works really, really well. You'll feel a little bit of the um, the more tropical fruit characteristics. It's quite, an, I think, again, it's a kind of apricotty flavour that's coming out of that. And maybe that's why they chose the Simcoe hop is for that apricot characteristic that it has. But it works really well. I mean, I can't see this style working so well. I mean, if they used a hop that was very forward on like grapefruit or something like that for example the apricot flavours that you get with the Simcoe hop work exceptionally well with this beer so kudos to them and actually kudos to Brewdog for choosing that for their IPA side of the beer it works really really well but as you go through the beer a little bit more you will feel just that light oily bubble kind of forming behind the very front of your tongue and you can pick up little hints of a kind of passion fruity flavour coming out there. There is that little element of the tropical fruits in there but then the apricot 
is the one that just kind of comes out more on the front of the tongue. You feel it just spreading towards the back, but it's a nice grassy, slightly floral, aromatic hop. And there is, I want to say there's just a little kind of underlining of a kind of piney resin element to the beer too. You can feel that just building around the edges of the tongue there as you go round to as you go round towards the back but it's not really that prominent at all it's just a very subtle flavour that underpins the, the hoppy characteristics of the beer it works really really well you'll notice on this beer just how smoothly the palate works together and everything just blends together beautifully so it's a really interesting style of beer what I would say about it is that it would be a real shame if Brewdog and Vine Stefan only do this once because to me, when you blend two very nice styles like this together and it works so well, I think it really is a shame just to only do this this once. But that, unfortunately, when you've got when Brewdog want to experiment as much as they do, sometimes that happens. But I think this beer is worthy of having another run at least. But yeah, as I say, the the, the styles blend together beautifully. That nice wheaty. Um, bready and yeasty malt base just blankets the middle of your tongue. The kind of grassy and aromatic characters are coming out quite nicely on the edge of the palate there, and the, you get this wheaty, this nice kind of um, spicy wheaty characteristic. This dry kind of spicy sweetness just builds up, and the grassy and aromatic hop characters build a good bridge between the malt base and the hoppy characteristics. And you've got a kind of oily bubble behind the very front of your tongue. A little bit of passion fruit in there, but it's mainly an apricoty flavour I think that's coming out. And there is a little bit of a kind of banana. -y infusion and again I think the apricot kind of over, over sort of overpowers that flavour a little bit and just blends it together very very well. It works really nicely this it's as I said quite a few times in the video this is a really wonderful blend of styles. Probably one of my favourite brew dog beers that I've reviewed actually so hopefully they do it again because I certainly would go for it and it'd be cool to see it brewed in Germany and brewed in Scotland as well and see if there's any difference in the way they do it. It would be really cool to see that. In terms of the mouthfeel of this one though, definitely a mid-bodied beer, very very smooth carbonation, there's a good malty Weizen base as you would expect, it's not really acidic in the same way that um, a, a sort of straight out Weizen is. The hoppy characteristics in this beer give it a nice little bit of dryness and there's a good bit of kind of juicy apricots as well so it's it the two the way that these styles blend together really well as I said it, it's just it's just wonderful this is one of my favorite brew dog beers that I've done actually so I'll definitely be keeping the bottle for this one but yeah um, I would say if you I'm not sure if you'll be able to find this beer because it was 2014 that it was released it's one I've had for a little while I got it just before I went away travelling so I didn't have time to review it but it's cool to finally get around to reviewing it and it's a nice treat to review for you definitely. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed another review from Brewdog and from Vine Stefan. been really cool to finally do this collaboration beer. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it before. I always enjoy reading your comments and replying to them and stuff. It'd be really cool to hear your thoughts on, on this one particularly since it's a hybrid beer. So please do that. In the meantime, until my next review, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this one. As I say, please go and like my Facebook page, add me as a friend on Untapped, but until the next review, slange you for now.